We're here with Mike Miller, the Northwest Hat Company in downtown Eugene on Pearl Street. And Mike, welcome. I came by here, drove by one day, and I went, there's a hat shop in Eugene now? Yep. Because you make some of the hats in here. Yes, we make all the custom hats, all the fur felt hats, and a lot of the genuine Panama hats. How did you get started making hats? You're a hatter then. Yes, I am the a madness. hatter. Not mad. Uh, <laughs> luckily, we don't use mercury anymore in the felting process, which keeps us a little more sane. I just got into hats over 10 years ago. Growing up, if you wanted something, dad would always tell you to go out to the barn, get some wood, and make it yourself. So when it came to hats, I decided I was going to do the same thing, just figure it out. I found some old books that had some of the techniques in it. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that do it by hand. You know, there, there's some out there and that process was almost lost. Turn of the 19th century, you had people bought, just doing everything by machines, you know? All the, all the hand work was done. Nobody knew how to do it anymore. So you also have other hats in here because you want to get people started on hats right. before they get to yours. Yes. You know, I mean, buying a custom hat's a little bit of an investment, but it's going to last you generations. Something your grandkids will have. Everybody should be able to get a hat. It shouldn't be for the elite. You know, I want anybody out there on the street that needs a hat to be able to come in here and get one. It's not very easy because most other hat makers won't tell you their processes because they spent well over a decade discovering it themselves because nobody would teach them either. One thing led to another and 10 years later, here I am building hats for people all over the world and uh, being the only hat store in Eugene. You created your own blocks then, you made them. We made the first sets and then once, you know, I got to getting the process down, I started collecting vintage ones. Collecting them, you know, find them on eBay, antique stores, anywhere you can because there's only a handful of guys that make them anymore. And they're really hard to get and they're very expensive. So collecting them as antique and restoring them to usable condition again is the way to go. Hats used to be the thing. I mean, everybody, every man it wasn't wore a, a hat. Man or woman that didn't have a hat, you know. And most of it was not just fashion, but it was practical. You didn't have a car to drive from point A to point B. You were out riding horses or you were walking and so you needed the cover of a hat. You had the 50s where the kids growing up in the 50s were your greasers. You know, they put so much effort into their hair, they weren't going to cover it up with a hat. Plus by then, cars had gotten so good. You got heaters, air conditioners, everybody had one. So you were driving from point A to point B. You didn't need to have the hat. You know, it wasn't as purposeful as it was in prior times. But you see it coming back in the fashion world. You see actors wearing them. You see musicians wearing them. Of course, musicians probably never stopped wearing them. They're the ones that maybe helped keep the hat alive, you know? So why do you think they're coming back, Mike? Uh, it's a great fashion accessory. You know, I mean, there's so many different things you can do with a hat, and they're just timeless. They're classic, you know? And, uh, and I think people want to go back to that. Thank you.